Well, good morning. It's Monday, March the 30th, and welcome to the Daily Devotion here at Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Kishnick, Senior Pastor at Grace. Um, the uh, title of our devotion this morning is Shelter in Place. Sound familiar? The reading for this morning is Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and your faithfulness to protect him. Then will I ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my vows day after day. This is a lesson. Shelter in place. Well, those are words that we've heard in other contexts before, before this present circumstance we're in. We heard it when there was an active shooter out someplace doing his evil. We heard it when there were tornadoes or other threatening events that made traveling or being out of doors dangerous and unnecessary. And, uh, but lately, we sort of got it in a more personal way. We understand it at a more personal level. It means stay where you are, stay well, and stay out of the way. In today's text, we hear King David. He says, how he longs to shelter in place under the wings of the protective God of, his, of Israel. Now, he had plenty of troubles, did that man. He had enemy nations all around him that repeatedly threatened Israel and wanted to take away its territory. He had enemies within his own nation who chafed under his rule and who coveted his power. And then he even had enemies within his own family who coveted his crown and his throne. And add to that the day-to-day -day stress of governing the people of Israel. And it's no wonder that David wrote so many plaintive psalms where he asked God for his help and for his protection. I long to dwell in your tent forever, he says, and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. And I'm sure he meant every word of that. To shelter in place under God's security and providence has been the desire of his people from the very beginning. But sometimes that shelter took some strange forms. Now, who would have thought that the best place for Jonah to shelter in place would be the belly of a great fish? Yeah, holy mackerel. He had, he had three days of safety and security from the wind and the waves. And it was also three days to consider his folly, three days to repent of his sin, three days to make confession to God. And when that fish spit him out on the shore, he was a changed man. And the lives of many people in Nineveh were changed as well. Now, who would have thought that the best place to shelter in place for a man named Daniel would be in the lion's den. Holy cuts and yammer. Those lions hadn't been fed in days and they were hungry. And who would have bet a nickel that when they opened the trap door the following morning, that they would find a whole man alive and well, and not just a skull and some bones on the floor of the den. A man who even then stood firm in his confession that the God of Israel had saved him from the teeth of the lion, and that his God was the one and only true God of the entire universe. And to prove that the lions hadn't just had a toothache or that they had slept all night by accident, when his opponents were thrown into the lion's den, before their bodies ever even touched the floor, the lions had already devoured them and broken all their bones. God had been Daniel's shelter and sure defense. Now, who would have thought that the best place to shelter in place for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
would have been the center of the fiery furnace. Holy smokes, Batman! That furnace was hotter than it had ever been stoked before. That furnace was so hot that its heat overwhelmed and killed the soldiers who had been assigned to throw those three men into it. And guess what? It was cool in the furnace. Yeah, yeah cool in more ways than one. Cool because not only did they not, were they not singed, not only were their clothes not scorched or even smelled of smoke, but they were joined by someone whom the king exclaimed, looks like the son of the gods. Uh-huh. They were sheltered by the one who lays claim to all mankind, the one who is also our refuge and our strong tower. Now, who would have thought that the best place to shelter in place for St. Paul would have been under house arrest in Caesar's Rome. But there he was, chained to his keeper, able to have visitors and to write letters, even as he waited months for his audience before the emperor. And during that time, he taught, he preached, he prayed, and he trusted that whatever befell him, that God was working through him by bringing him to the very center of the city that he had always longed to visit. And he did it at taxpayer expense. And there, at the center of the empire, Paul fulfilled his calling. So, here we are, sheltering in place, threatened by COVID-19 and all of its attendant hardships. Who's to say that this is also a part of God's plan for something bigger and something more important in his kingdom? How many people have suddenly been reminded that as much as we think that we have tamed and dominated nature, that there are things out there, large and small, that can turn our world upside down. How many people have dusted off their prayer life? How many have found ways to reach out to people that they've neglected for a long time? How many of us will be more aware of and more thankful for the simple things of life that we have so often and so much taken for granted. And finally, how good it is to shelter in place under the almighty wings of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God of Jonah, the God of Daniel, the God of the three men in the fiery furnace, the God of St. Paul, and our God. So, when once again we can gather with our families, our friends, and our brothers and sisters in the faith, when once again we can in unison praise God in worship and thanksgiving, and when once again we may travel, work, and play without masks, without hand sanitizers, and without fear, then we may still shelter in place under the wings of the one who is the rock who is taller than us, May we dwell in his tent forever, as has King David. Amen. Would you join me and we'll have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you on this Monday, we thank you for this day and its gifts and blessings. We thank you for the worship we were able to achieve yesterday on the internet. Pray, Father, that all through this week you would continue to bless us, guide us, protect us, and lead us. We pray in particular, Father, that you'd bless and defend those who are on the front lines of it. We pray for doctors and nurses, for technicians, and for all those who work in hospitals and doctor's offices, for EMTs and first responders, wherever they are. And Father, we pray that this thing would soon pass us by. We pray for those that are ill, that you'd keep them in your hand. Today, we especially pray that you'd bless and watch over Bill Davis, who's been hospitalized, Keep him safe, not only from the virus, but keep him in your hand. Be also with Elise Lyon in New York. Pray, Father, that you'd strengthen and bless her. And for all those who have been stricken by COVID-19, we pray, Father, that it'll pass them by and that they'll be immune from it ever after. We pray, Father, for your blessing now and always. We lift up our needs before you. In the name of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Um, just want to make one announcement. The church council will meet tomorrow evening by teleconference, as we've been doing, and they'll be making some decisions about Holy Week and Easter. Uh, sort of looks like we're probably going to miss those uh, being together, 
But as we've already said, the very first Sunday where we can all get together safely, that's going to be Easter Sunday. We will celebrate Easter when we get that chance. But we'll be celebrating it online if that's the way it goes as well. So we pray that if there's anything we need to know, you know somebody who's sick and needs our prayers, um, anything goes on that we ought to be aware of, please call the office, get us an email, uh, respond in one way or the other. In the meantime, know that you're all in our prayers and that we miss you. God be with you, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>